Welcome back everyone. In this episode, we're continuing our AI tutorial series, and this time we're starting something really exciting. We're building our complete weapons system from scratch. In this episode, we'll create a fully working pickup system so our player can walk up to a weapon, press a key, and instantly equip it in hand, just like in a real game. And this is just the beginning. In the next episodes, we'll move into aiming animations, line tracing, and shooting logic. Everything you need to turn this into a functional combat system. Later on, we'll also build a health and destruction system so our weapons can actually damage enemies, destroy meshes, and interact with our AI system from the previous series. All of these steps will come together to build a solid foundation for the advanced AI series that's coming right after, where we'll dive deep into Blackboard and behavior tree systems in Unreal Engine to create much smarter and more reactive AI. So stick around till the end of this video because you'll see how to build a clean, simple, and modular pickup system that connects perfectly with our upcoming aiming and shooting logic. And if you enjoy this series and find it helpful, make sure to subscribe. Your support really helps me keep going and bring you more of these deep dive tutorials every week. All right, let's get started. To set up our weapon system, we first need a proper skeletal mesh for either a rifle or a pistol. We'll use the rifle that comes with the Unreal Engine 5.6 first person template. Open your content drawer, right click anywhere, and choose the second option called Add Feature or Content Pack. From there, select the first person option and click Add to Project. Once that's done, you'll see a new weapons folder appear inside your content drawer. Open it up and you'll notice it already includes three weapons, a grenade launcher, a pistol, and a rifle. For this series, we'll focus on the rifle. Open the rifle folder, then go into the meshes folder and you'll find the rifle's skeletal mesh. This is the one we'll be using throughout the tutorial. Everything you learn in this series can later be applied to any other weapon type. Whether it's a pistol, shotgun, or launcher, the workflow will stay the same. Now let's make our third person character ready to hold the rifle. Open your content drawer, go to the third person folder, then into blueprints and open the BP third person character blueprint. Inside this blueprint on the left hand side under components, select the mesh labeled character mesh. Then click the add button and search for skeletal mesh. Add it and you'll see it appear just below the main mesh. Rename it to rifle. If you're not already in the viewport, switch to it now so you can see the character. With the rifle component selected, look over to the details panel on the right. Under the mesh section, change the skeletal mesh asset from none to SKM rifle. Next, we'll attach this rifle to the character's right hand. Still in the rifle's details panel, scroll to the top until you see the socket section. Click the magnifier icon next to parent socket, search for hand underscore R and select it. The rifle will now be attached to the character's right hand. Before adjusting the position, click on BP third person character in the components list. Then in the details panel, search for pause anim and enable it. This freezes the animation so you can easily line things up. Now select rifle again, clear the search box, and use location and rotation values to line it up nicely in the character's hand. Take your time here to find the sweet spot so it feels natural in place. Once you're happy with the position, click BP third person character again, disable pause anim, then compile and save the blueprint. Now press play to test it. Move around a bit and you'll see the character holding the rifle perfectly in the right hand, fully animated and ready for action. Now we're going to make the weapon pickable so the player can grab it directly from the level. Open your content drawer and go inside Blueprints folder, right click and choose Blueprint class. From the list, select Actor and name it BP Web Pickup. Double click to open it. On the left panel under Components, click the Add button and search for Skeletal Mesh. Add it and then drag it over the default scene root so it becomes the new root component. 
With the skeletal mesh selected, go to the details panel on the right and change the skeletal mesh asset to our rifle. Next, with the same skeletal mesh still selected in the components list, click add again and search for collision. Choose sphere collision. We'll use this to detect when the player is close enough to pick up the weapon. Select the sphere and in the details panel set the sphere radius to 150. Now click back on the skeletal mesh in the components list and search for widget. Add a widget component. Scroll down to the user interface section in the details panel and change the space setting from world to screen. Next to the widget class option, click the plus icon to create a new widget. Create a new folder called UI and name this widget WBPA Pickup, then click save. This will automatically open your new widget. At the top, switch the view mode from fill screen to custom and set the width to 500 and the height to 60. In the palette, search for canvas and drag a canvas panel into the hierarchy. Then in the same palette, search for text and drag a text block into the canvas panel. Set the anchors to fill, set all offsets, left, top, right and bottom to zero and enable size to content. Now change the text from the default text block to something like pickup E. Scroll down to the justification section and set it to center. You can style this however you like later. For now, we'll keep it simple so we can move on to the logic part. In the next step, we'll create the rotation and pickup logic to make this weapon interactable inside the level. Now let's go back to our BP Web Pickup Blueprint and make the weapon rotate and respond when the player gets close. In the Components panel, select BP Web Pickup. At the top, then click the Add button and search for Rotating Movement. Add it. The default settings work perfectly for this tutorial, but you can always adjust them later depending on your game's style. This simple component will make our weapon spin slowly in place, just like classic pickup items you see in games. Next, head to the Event Graph. In the Components list, right-click on Sphere Collision, go to Add Event, and choose On Component Begin Overlap. Do the same again and add On Component End Overlap. These two events will let us detect when the player enters or leaves the pickup area. Now, in the Variables section, create a new Boolean variable and name it Can Pick. Go back to your Begin Overlap event. From the other actor pin, drag out a wire and search for cast to BP third person character. This checks if the object that entered the sphere is our player. If it's not the player, the rest of the logic won't run. Next, drag can pick from your variables list and choose set. Connect it after the cast and check the box to make it true. Now, drag the widget component from the components list into the graph, pull a wire from it and search for set visibility. Connect it after the set node and set the new visibility to true. That's our begin overlap logic done. Now let's do the reverse for the end overlap event. From other actor, drag another wire, add a cast to BP third person character, then drag can pick again, but this time uncheck it to make it false. From the widget reference, add another set visibility node and keep the visibility unchecked. This hides the widget when the player walks away. Before we test, click the widget component on the left and in the details panel search for visible. Uncheck it to make sure it starts hidden by default. Now compile and save your blueprint, then open your level. From the content drawer, drag and drop BP web pickup into the scene. Press play. As you walk toward the rifle, you'll see the pickup E text appear. When you step away, it fades out. The rotating movement should also be working nicely, giving it that classic pickup look. Before we move on, let's make one small adjustment. Stop the game and go back to BP Web Pickup. With the widget selected, clear the search box and scroll down to the user interface section. Make sure the draw size matches the widget we created earlier, 500 by 60. Compile, save, and hit play again to double check. The pickup text should now appear in the perfect spot, centered above the weapon. Everything looks great. So, in the next step, we'll create a new input action that allows the player to actually pick up this weapon and attach it to the character. 
Now let's set up the input action that lets the player actually pick up the weapon. Open the content drawer and go into the input folder. Inside the action subfolder, right click and create a new input action from the input category. Name it IA Pickup and save it. Next, go back to the input folder and double click IMC default to open it. Click add next to mappings and choose IA Pickup from the list. Expand it, then click on the empty binding box and press the E key on your keyboard to assign it. Save your changes. Now open BP third person character. If your details panel still has the word pause from earlier, clear the search box. Then select the rifle component and search for visible. Turn it off so the weapon is hidden by default when the game starts. Next, move to the event graph. Right click on an empty area and search for IA pickup. Choose the enhanced input action event and expand it to reveal the started output. Then right click on the capsule component in the components list on the left, go to add event and select on component begin overlap. Move it close to your pickup event. From the other actor pin of that overlap event, drag out and search for cast to BP web pickup. This makes sure the overlap is happening with our weapon pickup blueprint. From the cast output, drag out again and search for is valid, the one with a question mark. Delete the old execution line from the cast to keep things clean. Leaving it connected can cause bugs and trigger the pickup automatically without pressing the E key. Now from BP Web Pickup, drag out the can pick variable. This is the same boolean we set earlier inside our weapon pickup blueprint and connect it into a branch node. Connect the as valid node into that branch's execution input. Next, create a new boolean variable in this blueprint and call it armed. Compile and make sure it's set to false by default. Drag it into the graph, get it, and add another branch to check if we're already armed or not. Now drag and drop the rifle skeletal mesh component from the components list, pull out a wire and search for set visibility. Set its visibility to true. After that, drag out your armed variable again, this time choose set and set it to true. This will make sure we can't pick up the same weapon multiple times. Finally, go back to your BP web pickup reference in the graph, pull out a wire and search for destroy actor, break execution line, and connect it right after setting the armed variable to true, compile and save everything. Now hit play to test it. Walk up to the weapon and press E. You'll see the weapon appear in your character's hand and the pickup actor will disappear from the scene just as expected. Alright, so before we finish this episode, let's take a final look at our blueprint setup and make sure everything is correct. Inside BP third person character, you should have your logic connected exactly like this. Remember from the second branch, the one that controls the visibility, we need to wire out from the false output pin, not the true one. That's an easy mistake to make, and if you connect it wrong, your weapon won't appear when you press E. So let's break down what happens here step by step. When the player walks close to the weapon, the sphere overlap triggers inside the pickup blueprint and sets can pick to true. Then when we press E, our input action checks if there's a valid weapon reference in range. If it's valid, we check the can pick boolean to see if the player is allowed to pick it up. If it's true and the player is not already armed, the next branch lets us continue. We then set the rifle mesh visibility to true so it becomes visible in the player's hands. After that, we set our armed variable to true to prevent picking up multiple weapons at once. Finally, we destroy the weapon pickup actor from the level since it's now in the player's possession. And that's it. We've got our first working weapon pickup system. The weapon appears when you grab it, disappears from the level, and stays equipped on the character. In the next episode, we'll move on to creating the aiming and animation system for our weapon. We'll start working inside the animation blueprint, blend the upper body and lower body animations together, and create a clean, smooth aiming motion. After that, we'll continue with line tracing and shooting logic so our weapon can actually fire. This whole weapon creation series is a direct continuation of our AI basic series, where we already covered chasing and forgetting systems, and it will connect everything together step by step. Once we finish the weapon and aiming systems, we'll move into a full health and destruction system, where we'll be able to blow up meshes, damage enemies, and fully eliminate AI. 
After that, we'll start covering more advanced AI topics, combining everything we've built so far into a complete dynamic AI combat system. So stay tuned, we've got a lot more exciting work coming next.